Hello everyone, welcome to the KZGN News. Today we'll bring you City Council news, news from Kevin McCarthy's office about Burroughs High School, airport news, today's KZGN Talking Points editorial, and much more. From the Rademacher Hills to Bee Mountain and the mighty Sierras, Ridgecrest to Inyo Kern and China Lake, this is your news for the Indian Wells Valley with the KZGN News Crew. Hello, I'm Tom Whitnick. Thanks for joining us for the news affecting Ridgecrest and the Indian Wells Valley. Last evening, the Ridgecrest City Council met for their regular meeting at City Hall at 6 p.m. First on the agenda, the council presented employee service awards. Fifteen-year service awards were presented to Anna Ball and Rachel Ford. A five-year award was presented to Daniel Leroy. The next agenda items are as follows. The council approved a contract change order number one for a zero dollar value with the contractor Super Seal and Stripe Incorporated on the Highway Safety Improvement Program Cycle 5 signing and striping for 12 intersections. The change to the plans and specifications was a delay in the project due to the vendor unable to receive 12 non-perforated sleeves because of a plant production issue. There was no additional cost to the city. Next, the council approved a resolution rescinding resolution number 15-64 and amending and approving a transit policy mandated by the Federal Transportation Administration for service criteria for complementary paratransit. The Federal Transportation Administration found that the State Department of Transportation, and that's Caltrans, was not compliant in requiring complementary paratransit service. Subsequently, FTA developed a service criteria policy which mandates that agencies receiving 511 funding adopt this policy. The city of Ridgecrest receives 511 funding. This policy, this policy has been reviewed by staff and minor adjustments have been made due to our current deviated flex route system. This policy follows FTA guidelines and adheres to FTA regulations. The city of Ridgecrest, Ridge Runner Transit, will provide complimentary paratransit service to origins and destinations within a width of three-fourths of a mile on each side of each fixed route. During the discussion and other action items on the agenda, the Council discussed adopting a resolution of the Ridgecrest City Council supporting the Military Banner Program as a signature event of the City and authorizing special event insurance coverage. This was approved by the Council. And finally, the Council considered supporting the 2015 USO event as a signature event of the City and authorizing special event insurance for them. This was also approved by the Council. These signature event proposals really do not cost the city any real money. The city is self-insured, so insurance cost does not change by doing this, but it does provide a direct cost reduction for the event providers since they don't have to purchase their own insurance. In news from Congressman McCarthy's office, he has announced that he has nominated the Burroughs High School Marching Band as the band to represent the 23rd District in the 2016 National Independence Day Parade held in Washington, D.C. This will be the 240th celebration of the United States. After that, the school board would have to approve the trip. If approved, then the funding would have to be identified to send the whole group there. Kevin's letter said the following. The parade strives to have marching bands from each state. I believe that the borough's marching band is a standout within the district and would be an excellent representative. Those were Kevin's words. This is a great news for boroughs and the whole community. This would show the area in a positive light. We all hope that Burroughs gets to go. In news from the Inukern Airport, the state has ordered all single-walled fuel tanks to be removed by 2025. During a project to remove the old fuel tanks out at the airport and replace them with new fuel tanks, it was discovered that one of the tanks was leaking into the soil. So with the soil now determined to be contaminated, the soil could be dealt with in two possible manners. First, the hole could be just sealed in concrete. And the second, the more expensive way, would be to have to remove the soil in accordance with EPA and state standards and hauled away to a special facility. A plan has to be submitted to the State Water Board for their approval. There has still been no approved plan yet, so the airport now just has to sit and wait for a determination by the State Water Board. After the airport gets an approved plan, then funding would, for, for the effort would have to be allotted. The underground tanks will be replaced with above-ground tanks. And in other news from the airport, they applied for funding for a second year in a row to help small communities attract air service where there is none now. 
The grants would be used to subsidize carriers that supply the air service. Inucurrent had applied for a $500,000 grant. No reason for the denial were provided, so this is another blow to the effort to get air service to return to the valley. Now stay tuned for the next KZGN Talking Points editorial right after the break. Thanks for staying with us. Now it's time for the 78th KZGN News Talking Points editorial. Here's today's topic. What did you think about last night's Republican presidential debate? Well, CNN did a decent job. I was concerned about how fair CNN would be as they are a liberal leaning network. This was a three hour debate that kept my attention throughout the whole event. There wasn't much boring about it. However, I think they did a decent job. CNN's use of split screens to show a candidate answering and the candidate that may be being challenged was a good technique. It gave us viewers a chance to watch a person's expressions when being challenged. I was also a little concerned on how the questions started. The questions were phrased in a way that any of the candidates that had received a comment from Trump over the last couple of weeks were asked to respond to his comments. But after that round of questions, the moderator started spreading the questions around. I do compliment them for allowing any candidate to respond to any comment made about them by another candidate. That was good. There were some good exchanges in the answers. As I predicted, Jeb Bush came in with energy, and he did a decent job. He probably got the best audience applause when he defended Brother George W. after Trump threw a slam on him about George W. Trump hit him on the financial crisis that started during the last three months of the George W. term. While Jeb didn't defend him on that topic, he did defend him on that the country was a much safer place under George W. The audience did acknowledge that with probably the largest applause of the debate. While no other pundits are saying it, if you watch Trump's reaction to Jeb's statement, he did give a head nod, acknowledging that he's right on that point. There was also a clever exchange between Trump and Jeb when he asked what they would want their code names to be if they were president. This was kind of funny. Jeb answered, Energizer, which drew a happy crowd reaction. Even Trump laughed about it. He gave Jeb a hand bump for that. Immediately after Jeb, Trump said his code name should be Humble. That too brought a large happy reaction from the audience because everyone knows Trump is anything but humble. Carson seemed okay, but a little weak. Carly Fiorina did a very good job last night. I would probably guess she either won the debate or was right at the top. The classic question posed to her was when they asked her to comment on Trump's derogatory comment to Rolling Stone magazine where he criticized her looks, which I do think was out of line on Trump's part. Trump's answer was, I think Carly is a beautiful woman with a beautiful face. Carly's blank stare after his comments spoke volumes. Huckabee was a very passionate about his responses. Rubio did a respectful job. Cruz did a great job as well. Christie was always trying to change the direction of the debate from the candidates going after each other to focusing on the Democratic candidates and their positions. Rand Paul took quite a few hits. Walker jumped in with some more energy and got his points across a little better than last debate. Kasich from Ohio did a fair job, but did answer some questions the audience didn't show much support for his answer. I have to apologize that I was coming back from a meeting in LA yesterday during the first part of the debate so I was not able to catch it. One question that showed some real differences between the candidates was the one concerning the Iran deal. Cruz was probably the most forceful of all the candidates against the deal. He vowed the very first day he was in office, the deal would be terminated. Trump followed with the comment, he believes it is one of the worst deals he has ever seen. Iran gets everything and we get nothing. Most of the candidates showed displeasure with the deal, but of differing resolve. I'd say Fiorina was also strong in her displeasure with the deal. Kasich drew quite a bit of flack for previously stating that the deal should be given a chance. During the answers, he had to really jump in and defend his stance. He seemed to echo the same Obama theme of trying to work with all our allies first. He ultimately said that if Iran violated the deal, then it would be off the table and any U.S. reaction would be available. There was considerable back and forth between the candidates on illegal immigration. I think everyone agreed about building a wall, though some were not as intense about it. 
but there were some major differences after the wall issue. Trump led the way with the most radical approach. The questioner and some of the other candidates said Trump's idea would not work and would be too expensive. Mostly about the deportation issue. Trump explained the first ones deported would be all criminals. Then the next group would be all the gangs in our large cities. And they listed a number of cities where we have a problem. We know that. He said these large gangs are made up of mostly illegal aliens. He said it's time to sweep through these gang infested areas, pick up all these illegals and ship them back to wherever they came from. After these real bad ones are gone, then he would start looking at the rest of the problem. His idea would be to get these other, other ones acknowledged, send them home with the prospect of a quick return after they are screened and found to not be criminals. There was also an exchange about anchor babies. Trump believes, as many law scholars do, the 14th Amendment was wrongly interpreted. They argue the 14th Amendment applies to any babies born in the United States when the mother is legally in the country that the amendment doesn't apply to those in the country illegally. Well, I could go on and on about the candidates and their answers. The pundits have been all over the news this morning that Carly won the debate. Many pundits are stating the stats about who had the most time. In this, Trump was clear the winner uh, in the amount of time they had to answer. But I attribute this offset due to the opening series of questions posed by the moderators. Again, many of the questions were phrased in a manner to a candidate to answer a past Trump comment about them. This allowed Trump the time to respond to each one of those questions, while the other had to stand and watch the exchanges. In the summation, Trump had to take quite a few hits. I would say that if you watched his split-screen reactions, and even his many hand exchanges between him and Jeb, he took things quite professionally. There was more than once you could see Trump acknowledging a comment with a quote, that's a good one, comment. I don't know if this debate will thin out the large group of candidates yet, but I hope so. Not that I'm targeting any individual candidate. I'm not. I just hope the field gets smaller so we will have more time to focus and learn more about the most likely candidates that have the chance of being the nominee. Again, I have not decided 100% on who I think it should be, but right now Trump, Carly, and Cruz are getting a lot of my attention. But just like all of you, we have a long way to go yet. We have a lot to learn about these candidates yet. In conclusion, I have to congratulate CNN and the moderators. They did a respectful job. The questions posed were relevant and properly phrased. Again, I hope they used the same probable tone when they questioned the Democratic candidates. I'm Tom Winnick, and that's what I think. I'd like to know what you think. If you have any comments about this editorial, or would like to discuss other items or recommend a topic, I'd like to hear from you please email them to info at kzgn.net. And stay with us for weather and sports after the break. Thanks for staying with us. Let's go to Keith for the weather. Thank you, Tom. From the National Weather Service, a small craft and tsunami advisory remains in effect for parts of Southern California. This includes Hawaii and American Samoa. After a magnitude 8.3 earthquake yesterday off the coast of Chile, generated tsunami waves. Areas under tsunami advisory could see minor coastal flooding and strong currents, which could be hazardous to boaters and swimmers. Temperatures across the nation. Carolinas came in at 78. Georgia, 74, Arkansas, 80, Texas, 77, Arizona, 80, and Los Angeles at 68. For our forecast here in the IWV, tonight mostly clear with a low around 62. South-southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. Friday sunny with a high near 91. East wind, 5 miles per hour. Friday night mostly clear with a low around 64. East wind, 5 miles per hour. Saturday will be sunny with a high near 96. East northeast wind 5 miles per hour. Saturday night will be clear with a low around 67. East wind 5 miles per hour. Sunday will be sunny with a high near 99. Northwest wind 5 miles per hour. Sunday night mostly clear with a low around 68. South southeast wind 5 miles per hour. And on Monday mostly sunny with a high near 98. West wind 5 miles per hour. Monday night, partly cloudy with a low around 71. West-southwest wind, 10 miles per hour. On Tuesday, we see a 20% chance of showers. Otherwise, partly sunny with a high near 91. Southwest wind, 5 miles per hour. And the chance of showers increased to 30% overnight. 
And that is your forecast for the IWV. Now back to Tom and the rest of the KZGN News. Thanks, Keith. Now let's go to Tom Eck with sports. And a very pleasant Thursday afternoon to everyone. Let's start locally. Burroughs High School football. The football team varsity tomorrow night has their fourth game of the season. They'll be looking for their first win. They'll take on Paraclete. Burroughs has played three very good opponents. Paraclete also a very tough opponent. A rematch of last year in which Paraclete won by one touchdown. Now the JV team will play Friday this week. They will play before the varsity game. The varsity game is scheduled for 7 o'clock here in Ridgecrest. The freshman football team, they are playing tonight over at Paraclete in Antelope Valley. All right, the volleyball team at Burroughs has done very well. They had a win against Antelope Valley the other day. They won in straight sets. They now have a 3 and one record. They'll be starting league play in about 10 days in the Mojave River League. Okay, baseball, just about uh, two weeks left, a little over. The Dodgers, another win last night. They shut out Colorado 2-0. The Giants win. They beat Cincinnati. However, they cannot gain any ground. The lead still seven and a half. The Giants blew an opportunity two nights ago when they blew a lead and lost to the Reds nine to eight. Okay, the Angels, who won two nights ago against Felix Hernandez, took a loss last night. The final score three to one. David Murphy hit a three run home run the night before last, and last night he hit a single solo home run for the Angels only run. Now the Angels find themselves right now four and a half games behind the leader Texas Rangers but they find themselves only three games behind the Astros who were beat eight to nothing by the Rangers last night. Now what the Angels have to do <clears throat> the Angels will play four games against Minnesota. Now Minnesota is the other wild card team trying to make that last spot they have available. Right now the Yankees have clinched, well I won't say clinched but are well in the driver's seat for the number one wild card spot, the number two wild card spot, which was created two years ago to add another team, has really four teams competing for the one spot. The Astros, the Angels, the Twins, and all of a sudden, the Cleveland Indians. Now the Indians find themselves only a half game behind the Angels, so anything can still happen. And the reason anything can happen is the Angels get to play the Twins four games starting tonight and the Twins get to play against the Indians in the middle of next week and the Angels get to play against the Astros in the middle of next week. So a lot of fun ahead if you're like pennant races. Okay, quickly on the scoreboard, Cleveland won again. As mentioned, they beat Kansas City. Toronto finds himself a winner over Atlanta. And now the uh, Toronto Blue Jays and the New York Yankees, it's a three-game lead for the Blue Jays in that. The Oakland A's had a loss last night after beating the White Sox 17-6. to So let's take a look now at what uh, the standings would look like. In the Central Division of the National League, the Cardinals have a three-game lead over the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Cardinals picked up a win last night against Milwaukee. Over in the East, the New York Mets lost last night. Washington won last night, so their hearts are still beating. Washington down seven and a half games. What Washington's going to try to do is get the lead down as low as they can because they finished the season three games in New York then they might control destiny in their own hands after leading most of the year. In the West, the Dodgers have a nice lead over the Giants of seven and a half games. Those two teams have three more games left against each other. In the American League, Toronto and the Yankees. Toronto still leading by three over the Pennstripers. Over in the West, the Houston Astros blew their lead. They're now a game and a half behind the Rangers. Who would have thought the Texas Rangers would one day this season be 11 games over 500. Hard to believe. In the Central Division, even though the Royals aren't playing real well, they well have clinched the Central Division. That's your sports for this Thursday afternoon. For KZGN, I'm Tom Heck. So that's the news for today. Officer of KZGN TV, no, you have a choice in what you watch for your news. We all thank you for choosing KZGN TV, Ridgecrest's only locally owned community TV station. Coming up next, Ridgecrest Talk.